Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Fans can make a difference in the outcome of a game. In fact, they can make so much of a difference that the league put in anti-noise rules back in the late 80s and early 90s and allowed the referees to stop the play if it got too noisy in the stands and the opposing offenses couldn't hear anything or communicate with each other. But while fans can make an impact from a disruption perspective for opposing teams, they're not the one making roster decisions. You're not seeing the fans making personnel moves, or the coach doing something specifically because the fans asked him to. When fans create petitions and voice their complaints to the coaching staff about something, do those ever work? Well, you might be surprised to learn that in 1989, yes, this actually worked. Cowboy fans got head coach Jimmy Johnson to do something that he wasn't originally planning on doing and the fan backlash and outrage was so severe and so noteworthy that Johnson reversed course. This is the story of the time that fans actually convinced a head coach to do something. Before we talk about the actual incident and decision that Johnson made, we need some context with the player in question. Our story begins in 1974, when the Dallas Cowboys had the number one pick in the NFL draft, having acquired it from the Houston Oilers in a trade. And with that pick, the Cowboys chose Tennessee State defensive end Ed Tutal Jones. I think it's safe to say that this pick turned out to be an incredible one for the Cowboys. When you think of some of the greatest Cowboy defenders in franchise history, Tutal Jones is definitely up there. Heck, depending on what era you grew up in, he might be the first name that comes to mind. Jones played in every game as a rookie, but never found his way into the starting lineup. But in 1975, thanks to the retirement of Cowboy legend Bob Lilly, and thanks to veteran defensive end Larry Cole shifting inside to defensive tackle, Jones finally found his way in. He started every game for the Cowboys in 1975, and from that point on, it started an incredible streak. It was a streak that would make him remembered and loved in the eyes of many Cowboy fans. Because after Jones started on September 21st, 1975, on opening day of the season against the Los Angeles Rams, Jones would not miss another start for a long, long time. From 1975 to 88, Jones started an incredible 193 consecutive games. And it's not like Jones was starting these games by default. No, he was really, really good. He helped the Cowboys win Super Bowl 12. He was an integral part of the Doomsday 2 defense. He made it to three straight Pro Bowls in the early 1980s, and during the strike short of 1982 season, was even named a first team All Pro. He was a second team All Pro a couple of times as well, and even in his mid 30s, was inside the top 10 of the league multiple times in sacks. Now, the 193 consecutive starts has a giant asterisk next to it, as you can argue whether it was actually 193 straight starts. He retired in 1979 to pursue a boxing career, though he came back in 1980. And he missed a start during the 1987 season due to the strike, so it's really 193 consecutive games started that didn't take place during a strike or retirement. So you can debate whether or not that's really 193 straight. However, entering the 1989 season, he was just a few games away from hitting the 200 consecutive start mark. That streak was looking like it was about to be in serious jeopardy. In 1989, the Dallas Cowboys were not a good football team. In fact, they were one of those teams that was historically bad and was clearly in the middle of a rebuilding phase. Head coach Jimmy Johnson took over the team from Tom Landry, the team's only head coach in franchise history. And safe to say he had a lot of work in front of him. It was clear right at the onset, following a 28-0 loss to the New Orleans Saints in Week 1, that this was going to be a long season. Through seven weeks, the Cowboys were 0-7. They had the worst defense in football, the second worst offense in football, and the worst point differential in football by a healthy margin, having been outscored over the first seven weeks by a whopping 117 points. The team wasn't going anywhere, but there was clearly some young talent on that team. One of those guys was Tony Tolbert. The team drafted him out of UTEP in the fourth round that year, and he would eventually become an integral part of the Cowboys' dynasty throughout the 1990s. Eventually, he would start 121 games for the team, including every game from 1991 to 97, and would be named a Pro Bowler during the 1996 season while winning three Super Bowls in the process. But in 1989, he was a rookie who was riding the bench while Two Tall Jones was in the starting lineup. And Jones wasn't doing much of anything that year. He was clearly at the end of the road, Jones was 38 by this point, and his last 11 games dating back to the end of the 1988 season, he had registered just one sack. That was a far cry from the days where he was getting double-digit sacks. 
Part of that was his age. And part of that was the fact that Johnson wanted him to play more tackle than end, which wasn't quite working out his plan. You got a team that's not going anywhere in 1989, with one of those starters being an ineffective 38-year-old who's likely not going to be on the team in 1990, and you have a young player with potential that was chosen by the new regime waiting in the wings for his opportunity. And so, after a 36-28 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, Jimmy Johnson announced that the streak was coming to an end. After meeting with defensive line coach Butch Davis, they agreed that Tony Tolbert was going to make his first ever start and would replace Tutal Jones, ending his streak of consecutive games started at 198. Most of the time, that would be the end of the story. Heck of a run, but it's something that should happen, and all good things must come to an end. Even Jones himself had no problem with it, saying that he saw it coming. He said when Dallas turns it around, it will be Tony Tolbert, not Ed Jones, who is playing. This is the move they had to make. Except it didn't quite work out that way. Because once fans got wind of this, they made their frustrations heard. And that's where this story gets really interesting. When Jimmy Johnson announced the move, there was outrage. How dare you stop the streak before it reaches 200 games? It's about the only good thing going for the Cowboys right now. You got rid of Herschel Walker. You haven't won a game yet. You don't have your first round pick because you chose Steve Walsh in the supplemental draft, who wants to be traded and who isn't playing. And now you're going to end the legend's streak? Hundreds of angry fans phoned into the team facility. Fans with tickets threatened to not show up and boycott the game entirely. One attorney by the name of Robert Goodwin even went as far as threatening to sue the team, threatening to file a class action lawsuit on behalf of all ticket holders under the state of Texas's deceptive trade laws. Obviously, the odds of Goodwin actually winning that lawsuit were about as high as the Cowboys winning Super Bowl 24 after starting 0-7. But the fans made their frustrations heard. At the very least, let Jones get to 200. Heck, just let him start the game and then do whatever the heck you want. But let Jones cross that milestone. And with that, Johnson reversed course. The fans won. Johnson said that Jones was going to start the next two games, saying if that's what the fans want, we'll keep Ed in there. They want to see him start 200 consecutive games, so we'll do it. Jones started on October 29th in a 19-10 loss to the Phoenix Cardinals. And the following week, in a 13-3 victory on Sunday Night Football against Washington, he reached 200 consecutive starts. The streak would even continue for three more weeks before it finally came to an end after 203 consecutive starts. Jones would not be back with the Cowboys in 1990, as the 1989 season would be his last in the NFL. Jones held that record until 2016, when tight end Jason Winnen broke the team record for most consecutive starts. And for all the disgruntled Cowboys fans, including the attorney that said that Jerry Jones was nowhere close to building a Super Bowl team as he promised, the next decade would be much better, as the team created a near-unstoppable dynasty. There was even someone who was crazy enough to predict that dynasty was coming. You can learn more about that crazy but true prediction by clicking the card in the upper right corner. So what's the lesson of the story here? Sometimes, fan pressure actually works, and can lead a coach or an organization to making a decision. Sometimes, bullying actually does work. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jarrogator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for opening up the channel. The support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.